is up, everybody? JT Dangerous here once again. I am back to do my week one NFL predictions. Yes, we are back for another season of NFL predictions on the channel. We even got a brand new intro music. And the road to Super Bowl 54 begins now. So I am very excited to do my week one NFL predictions for you guys this year. We start from week one all the way up to Super Bowl 54. So sit back, relax, and I hope you guys do enjoy. Now, if you have not checked out my four of the videos I put up on the channel today, guys, definitely go check them out. This is the fifth video of the day, guys. So I hope you guys will be able to watch all these videos. Always show your support on the channel by watching these videos. Super kicking those like buttons, hitting that notification bell, and commenting your picks, your opinions, and representing your NFL teams in the comment sections down below. Now, if this is your first time watching my channel today, is a first time viewer, and this is your first video. Boy, big to go in if you're a huge fan of the NFL like myself and you're ready for week one of the NFL. NFL season. Welcome to the Dangerous Alliance. I'm JT Dangerously. Welcome to the club because this club is just, just two. Whoop, whoop. Again, thank you guys so very much. Now, other than that, let's get right into these week one NFL predictions. Starting off on Thursday night with an NFC North rivalry showdown between the Green Bay Packers heading to Soldier Field to face the Chicago Bears. Now, the Packers are coming off a very rough 6-9-1 season last year, and they're looking to start the season off with a big victory over the NFC North champions on their home turf. They're inside of the Chicago Bears coming off their fantastic 12-4 season last year, winning the NFC North, but falling short in the wild card round against the Philadelphia Eagles in another Chicago heartbreaker on a missed field goal. But this Bears team is damn good. Even after that, after last season, they got Mitchell Trubinsky, they got Khalil Mack on defense, and I'm going to just say this right now as a bold prediction to start the year, I think the Bears will repeat as NFC North champions. So coming from me in this NFC North rivalry showdown on Thursday Night Football to start this year's NFL season, I'm going to go with Mitchell Trubinsky and the Bears to defeat the Green Bay Packers on Thursday Night Football. And now the Sunday slate. Finally, football on Sundays again, starting at 10 a.m. here on the West Coast, 1 p.m. on the East Coast, starting off with the reigning NFC champions, the Los Angeles Rams, heading to Charlotte to face the Carolina Panthers. Now, the Rams are coming off their fantastic 13-3 season last year, making it all the way to the Super Bowl before falling to my New England Patriots. And this Rams team this year is still looking amazing, and I wouldn't be surprised they can win the NFC West for the second year in a row and quite possibly make it back to the NFC Championship game and quite possibly the Super Bowl. They're excited the Carolina Panthers coming in after their rough 7-9 season in the last year, and hopefully this season they will turn it around with Cam Newton and Christian McCaffrey and Greg Olson, hopefully he can stay healthy, and the and the Cardinal, I mean, and the Panthers are looking to start the season off with a big win over the reigning NFC champions. So coming from me in this matchup, I'm gonna go with Jared Goff and the Los Angeles Rams to get it done on the road and defeat the Carolina Panthers. And now the next matchup. It is an NFC East rivalry showdown between the Washington Redskins heading to Philly to face the Philadelphia Eagles. Now the Redskins are coming off a very rough 7-9 season last year, but they did pick up a fantastic quarterback in the NFL draft in Dwayne Haskins out of The Ohio State University. And if the Redskins are smart, they will start Dwayne Haskins because he is a fantastic talent. I watched him at Ohio State last year, and he definitely uh, is a threat running and throwing the ball. They're inside you have the Philadelphia Eagles coming off their 9-7 season last year before falling to the New Orleans Saints in the NFC Divisional Round. But this Eagles team is still a legit threat in the NFC East with the Cowboys getting better. And really it's a two-team race in the NFC East with the Cowboys and, the, and these Eagles. And with Carson Wentz back from the ACL injury, he's looking to bring, his, bring the Eagles back and get them back to the Super Bowl. So coming from me in this NFC East rivalry showdown, I'm going to go with Carson Wentz and the Philadelphia Eagles to get it done at home and defeat the Washington Redskins in a close one. And now the next matchup. It is an AFC East rivalry showdown between two of the worst teams in our division, the Buffalo Bills, heading to East Rutherford to face the New York Jets. Now, both teams are coming off rough years. Well, what else is new with the Bills and the Jets? The Bills coming off 6-10 and season, the Jets coming off a 4-12 and season. But the big story coming in is what the Jets did in the offseason by getting Le'Veon Bell from Pittsburgh to come to East Rutherford. Now, I'm just going to say this right now. Le'Veon Bell, you nuts. You could have gone to any other team in the NFL, in the AFC or the NFC. You could have given a team a elite running back, but you chose to go to the New York Jets. You know the Jets haven't been a threat to my Patriots in the AFC East for, for years. You really think you guys are going to be a threat this season? Yeah, and I like Sam Darnold, but 
Le'Veon Bell must have been smoking something crazy to think he can win in New York with the Jets. And that is that is a fact. So coming from me in this AFC East rivalry showdown between the two worst teams in our division, and we will see who will be number three and number four in that, in that division this year. I'm going to go with Sam Darnold and Le'Veon Bell and the New York Jets to get it done at home and defeat the Buffalo Bills. And now the next matchup. It is the Dirty Birds, the Atlanta Falcons, heading to Minneapolis to face the Minnesota Vikings. Now the Falcons are coming off a rough 7-9 season last year, and they're looking to start the season off with a big victory on the road. They're inside the Minnesota Vikings coming off their 8-7-1 season last year, and I think this year they're the only threat to the Chicago Bears in the NFC North with Captain Kirk Cousins running the show. So coming from me in this matchup... I'm going to go with Captain Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings to get it done on at home and defeat the Atlanta Falcons. And now the next matchup. It is the Baltimore Ravens heading to Miami to face the Miami Dolphins. Now the Baltimore Ravens are coming off winning the AFC North, uh, AFC North title with a 10-6 record before losing to the Los Angeles Chargers in the wildcard round. But this Baltimore Ravens team is on the up. They're definitely on the rise. And when you start Lamar Jackson, like I said all the way back last year in week one, if you start Lamar Jackson, you're going to win. And that's exactly what they did. They started to win with him, and they have stuck with him as their top quarterback so Flacco can get the hell out but this Ravens team is still a good team defense is still legit and the Ravens are looking to once again have a big year this year they're inside the other Miami Dolphins coming off their 7-9 season last year and it just seems like this Dolphins team doesn't want to be a threat to my Patriots in the AFC East as much as I want them to be a threat now their quarterback situation is kind of not not good because you got Ryan Fitzpatrick who brings out the Fitz magic every once in a while and Josh Rosen the the former UCLA Bruin now it's crazy to think that the Dolphins haven't been a great team it hasn't been a that hasn't had a great quarterback in a long time and I don't know how they're going to win with Ryan Fitzpatrick because when they talk about his Fitz magic, it comes and goes. It doesn't happen every week. It happens every other week. And Josh Rosen is not really a threat. He was not really a threat at UCLA. And I don't know if he's going to be an elite quarterback in the NFL. And I'm really hoping the Dolphins turn it around this season. I really want them to be a threat to us in the AFC East. Because we can't be at, we can't be at the top forever. So, coming from me in this matchup... I'm going to go with Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens to defeat the Miami Dolphins in a close one. And now the next matchup. It is the Kansas City Chiefs heading to Jacksonville to face the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now the Kansas City Chiefs are coming off their 12-4 season last year before losing to my Patriots in the AFC Championship game. But that team last year, the Chiefs were amazing. Especially Magic Mahomes, Madden's 20 cover boy. And hopefully that Madden curse will not hit him this year because he was on a whole other level last year with how many touchdowns he threw. I think he threw like 50-plus touchdowns last year. But once again, the Chiefs fell in the playoffs. And that's where it really counts, the playoffs. And when you got Andy Reid coaching, I don't know how you're going to win with that. He's a great regular season coach. Andy Reid is a great regular season coach, but he's not a postseason winning coach. He's not a Belichick. He's not, um, he's not a, what do you call it? He's not a, a Sean Payton. He's not, um, uh, who else? Is, uh, he's not a John Gruden who has history in the playoffs. He's not a Chuck Pagano or, any, or, um, or uh, Bruce Arians. He's just a good regular season coach but a postseason coach he just cannot win the big one I mean even in Philly he couldn't win the Super Bowl with them you really think that he can win he can win the Super Bowl with the Kansas City Chiefs they got a good lineup we've seen their defense and offense is great they did add Lamar uh, LaShawn McCoy to that coaching staff so that could definitely help but if Kansas City wants to elevate to the next level they got to get a coach that can actually win playoff games there is idea of the Jacksonville Jaguars coming off their 5 and 11 season last year and talk about a turn talk about a team that went from the top defense in the AFC making it to the AFC Championship game to being once again non-existent in their own AFC South division. And it's crazy to think that this team used to be the have the they used to have the best defense in the AFC and now they're almost being just they're just being they're looking like they're going back into rebuild mode the only thing I like about Jacksonville is that Tony Khan owns them and Tony Khan is one of the uh, principal owners of all the elite wrestling that's maybe the only thing I like about them and the Jaguars organization so coming from me in this matchup 
Got to go with Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs to get it done on the road and defeat the Jacksonville Jaguars in a blowout. And now the next matchup. It is the Tennessee Titans heading to the dog pound to face the Cleveland Browns. Now the Tennessee Titans are coming off their 9-7 season last year. They're looking to start the season off with a big win on the road. There is idea of the Cleveland Browns coming off their 7-8-1 season. A lot of people would think 7-8-1 is not a great record, but they definitely got hot at the last half of the year. And when you start Baker Mayfield, like I've been saying all year last year, you're going to win. And this season's Browns are the top uh, were the talk of the NFL offseason this whole year with the moves that they made by getting Odell Beckham Jr., Kareem Hunt, which they won't have Kareem Hunt for the first eight games of the season, but getting him is big. Getting Odell Beckham Jr. away from the Giants was huge. And you look at the roster they got. I mean, look at the roster. They got, they got Baker Mayfield, Kareem Hunt, Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham Jr., Nick Chubb. Uh, I think Nick Chubb wanted to get traded. Navin Njuku. I mean, that roster looks good. And I'll make a huge bowl prediction right now. I think the Browns can win at least 10 games and make the playoffs. I don't think they'll win the AFC North, but I think they can make a wild card run. That's what I think. When you start Baker Mayfield, you win. So coming from me in this matchup, I'm going to go with Baker Mayfield and those Cleveland Browns to defeat the Tennessee Titans. And now the next matchup. It is the Indianapolis Colts heading to Los Angeles to face the Los Angeles Chargers. Now the Colts are coming off a very good 10-6 season last year before losing to Kansas City in the AFC Division. And a lot of people were thinking the Colts were going to turn it around this upcoming season, boy. And boy, were they wrong because they got this shock of a lifetime uh, during the preseason. Because if you haven't heard, if you've been living under a rock, quarterback Andrew Luck retired from football Two weeks before the regular season start, that floored the NFL world when they they I heard when everybody heard that, including myself. And I know every Colts fan was like, "You what? Like, why are you retiring now? We're going into the season. And you're retiring two weeks before the season starts." And really, Andrew Luck just just absolutely uh, just threw just threw the Colts under a huge bus. And I mean, as much as I love Andrew Luck, I watched him at Stanford. That was just the wrong time to do it. Going two weeks into the regular season, you retire on a pre, like, you retire. I get that the offense didn't help you, but you could have thought of doing this in the offseason last year instead of doing it two weeks before the regular season. You really left the Colts high and dry luck. And I, again, he wants to, he wants to get, he wants to recover from all the, the, the shoulder injuries and all that. But you have to do that in the off season. You cannot do that two weeks into the regular season, whether whether you like it or whether whether anybody agrees with me or not. Doing that two weeks before the season starts is definitely dirty. And now the Colts are almost high and dry. They only have Brian Hoyer, who they signed today, and Jacoby Brissett. That's the Colts quarterback situation right now. Brian Hoyer and Jacoby Brissett. You see where Andrew Luck put him. They put a, he put him in the grave before the season even started. And the fact that the Colts are now are going to be not even a threat at all in the a, in the AFC South, and I'm now predicting Houston's going to win the South again. Colts are definitely going to be the team that's going to quite possibly lose every game and look to get a number one draft pick in the NFL draft next season. But sucks about Luck though. But best of and I really hope he gets healthy and hopefully he'll come back. But Doing that two weeks before the season, not cool. There is idea of the Los Angeles Chargers coming off their fantastic 12-4 season before losing to the New England Patriots in the AFC Divisional Round, but the Chargers are definitely reju uh, rejuvenized themselves last year. I mean, Anthony, uh, Anthony Lynn did a fantastic job coaching. Definitely coach of the year in the AFC, in my opinion. Phillip Rivers looking to bring the Chargers once again back to the playoffs, and maybe this year they can actually get past the Divisional Round. So coming from me in this matchup... This would have been a good matchup if it was Andrew Luck versus Phillip Rivers, but now it's either Brian Hoyer or Jacoby Brissett versus Phillip Rivers. Just no comparison. So coming from me, I am taking Phillip Rivers and the Los Angeles Chargers to get it done at home and to defeat the now-dead Indianapolis Colts. 
And now the next matchup. It is the Cincinnati Bengals heading to Century Link to face my Seattle Seahawks. Now the Cincinnati Bengals are coming off their rough 6-10 and 10 season last year. But the one thing that they, they, they did in the offseason was the best move they've been waiting to do for years. And that's get rid of Marvin Lewis. They finally got rid of him. So Cincinnati will finally have a new coach to get uh, get the job done. But I really do not think there will be a threat in the AFC North with Cleveland getting better. Baltimore getting better and the Steelers getting better. So they're back in the same position they were years ago, just trying to rebuild the, the rebuild the franchise, and they're looking to get a big win here on the road. They're inside you have my Seattle Seahawks coming off their 10-6 season last year before losing to the Dallas Cowboys in the wild card round. But a lot of people didn't expect us to even win 10 games, and we once again proved them wrong. That's what the Seahawks do. They always like to prove people wrong. When they say, hey, you're not going to win 10 games, well, we're going to win 10 games. We're not going to make the playoffs. Well, we made the playoffs last year. A lot of people didn't even think us even be in the playoffs at all. And with the Seahawks this season, they look good. Russell Wilson's looking good. Pete Carroll's looking to bring it back. And they picked up a huge defensive player on their defense to really rejuvenize the Legion of Boom by getting Jadavion Clowney. Seattle got Jadavion Clowney from Houston for a third-round pick and two two players. You talk about a steal for the Hawks, and that pick definitely makes the Hawks defense damn near scary right now with Jadavion Clowney on that defensive line. I mean, that is a big move for the Seahawks, and I'm feeling that this is going to be another good year for the boys uh, the boys in Seattle. So coming from me in this matchup, I'm going to go with Russell Wilson and my Seattle Seahawks to get it done at home, which they don't usually lose at home, to defeat the Cincinnati Bengals. And now the next matchup. It is the San Francisco 49ers heading to Tampa to face the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now both these teams had a very rough year last year. San Francisco coming off a 4-12 and season. And this season they're looking to make sure they protect their money asset. And that's Jimmy G Money. Coming back from the ACL injury he suffered last year. And he's looking to bring the 49ers back from the dead this season. And because when he was starting last year, he looked good. But then when the injury happened, the 49ers just faltered and just collapsed. So if the offensive line is going to be strong enough this year, they have got to keep Jimmy G Money from taking those big hits or getting himself injured. And with the big addition to Richard Sherman on the defense, this Niners team could definitely be a threat if Jimmy G Money stays healthy in the NFC West. They're in the of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers coming off another 5-11 season uh, last year. And it just seems like after that one winning season, they just continue to just go, uh, 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 kaboom. And that's kind of what Tampa Bay has been looking like every season, ever since that last winning season. And they had to do something on the coaching side, so they picked up a guy who can definitely bring a team back from the dead. And Bruce Arians, the, the fedora-wearing Bruce Arians coming to Tampa Bay looking to revitalize the buck, uh, the 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 Tampa Bay Buccaneers and keep them up float no pun intended and this could definitely help Jameis Winston out because he's been dealing with coaches that really don't know what to do with him and I think Bruce Arians knows what to do with quarterbacks like Jameis Winston so coming from me in this matchup I'm gonna go with Jimmy G Money and the San Francisco 49ers to sink the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and now the next matchup. It is an NFC East rivalry showdown between the New York Giants heading to the Jerry Dome to face the Dallas Cowboys. Now the New York Giants are coming off a 5-11 season last year and everything went wrong for the Giants last year. And they're coming into this season looking to turn the ship around. And with Jaquan Barkley there, definitely one of the top running backs out of uh, Penn State. And freaking, I think he's going to have another great year on the ground. They were looking for a quarterback in the draft. And they got a quarterback. They got Daniel Jones from Duke. No Giants fans like that move. And even though I watched Daniel Jones at Duke, great player, but he's not a, an elite starting quarterback that the Giants were looking for. And I don't know where the Giants organization was thinking and getting him. And then they let Odell Beckham go, which is like they just lost their top receiver now. And really, Eli Manning's got to do it all by himself. And I don't think the Giants are even going to be a threat this season in the NFC East. Then on the other side, you have the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Then you have the Dallas Cowboys coming off their 10 and 6 season last year uh, before losing to the Los Angeles Rams in the NFC Divisional Round. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> but the Cowboys are still one of the threats in the NFC East, with the Eagles being their biggest threat. And the Cowboys are looking good. I mean, they have 
Dak Prescott and Zeke the Freak. And they also got back Jason Witten coming out of retirement after his uh, his uh, his announcing roles last year in the NFL. So it's a big addition to the Cowboys in which they desperately need it. So coming from me in this NFC East rivalry showdown with a bunch of sneezes in, uh, in tow, <laughs> I'm going to go with Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys to get it done at home and defeat the lowly New York Giants. And now the next matchup. It is the Detroit Lions heading to Glendale to face the Arizona Cardinals. Now the Detroit Lions are coming off a 6-10 season last year. And they're looking to turn it around this year by getting a big win on the road. But let's be honest here. The Lions are going to be terrible once again this year in the NFC North. There is idea of the Arizona Cardinals coming off their abysmal 3-13 season last year. And with that worst record, they got the number one overall draft pick. And it's a... Guy I know very well, watching him at Oklahoma, he was last year's Heisman Trophy winner, Kyler Murray. And they also picked up a big-time coach out of the college ranks as well from Texas Tech and getting the handsome one, Cliff Kingsbury. Now, if Arizona is smart, and I'm going to say this right now, Arizona, you start Kyler Murray week one. If you start him in week one, he will give you at least eight-plus wins this season. I, I'm telling you, that's a bold prediction for me. If you start Kyler Murray, Arizona, you'll win at least eight-plus games this season. And they're looking to turn the ship around with a new coach and a, a franchise quarterback in Kyler Murray. So, coming from me in this matchup, I'm going to go with Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals to get it done at home and defeat the Detroit Lions. And now the big matchup on Sunday Night Football. It is an AFC clash between the Pittsburgh Steelers heading to Gillette to face the reigning AFC East champions, the reigning AFC champions, and the reigning and defending six-time Super Bowl champions, my New England Patriots. Now, this one's going to be an absolute war. Now, starting off with the Pittsburgh Steelers are coming off their 9-6-1 season last year, failing to make the playoffs. And I'm going to just say this right now. Mike Tomlin is on the hot seat this season because if the Steelers can't make the playoffs this year and they cannot get as past, they can't get as far as the AFC Championship game or win another Super Bowl, I think Tomlin's time at Pittsburgh is going to be done. And this season's Steelers offense is going to be very unique without without Antonio Brown or Le'Veon Bell. I mean, you got some great talents there still with Juju Smith-Schuster and James Conner, but we're going to see if if. Uh, Big Ben Roethlisberger can adapt to the pressure because a lot of people think you lose two of those kind of players, you're destined to have a bad, bad season. But knowing Big Ben, he can get it done, and he's looking to get a big win on the road over the reigning Super Bowl champs. There's how you have my New England Patriots coming off their 11-5 their, their season, winning the Super Bowl over the Los Angeles Rams, winning our sixth Super Bowl championship, whether anybody likes it or not. We're the best, and we're looking towards this season to be another great year. And I'm just going to say this right now. It's another bold prediction. Patriots win the AFC East. Patriots make the playoffs, and if they can make the Super Bowl, we're just going to have to wait and see. But when you got Bill Belichick running the show, you got Tom Brady at his age doing what he does every Sunday, getting it done, Mr. Clutch himself, getting Julian Edelman. We did lose Rob Gronkowski to retirement, and I'm very happy for Rob Gronkowski. He went out on top. And knowing that, knowing the Patriots' offense, they can definitely have players to fill that void. Defense is still good. A couple injuries, but we'll get it done. But this one's going to be good, and New England's looking to start the season off by knocking off quite possibly their, only, their second biggest threat in the AFC. So coming from me in this huge AFC showdown on Sunday Night Football, it's the Steelers, Leedy1, one of my subscribers, versus myself as a Patriots fan. So this one's going to be really good. So coming from me, sorry, Lady One. This season's not gonna. This season's not gonna start with a Steelers victory. It's gonna start with a Patriots victory. So I am taking my New England Patriots to defeat the Pittsburgh Steelers on Sunday Night Football. And now the Monday Night matchups, and as, and of course we have a double header on Monday Night. First, with the Houston Texans heading to New Orleans to face the New Orleans Saints. Now, the Houston Texans are coming off their 11-5 season last year before losing to the Indianapolis Colts in the wild card game. But this Texans team is right now the front runners to win the AFC South after the shocking retirement of Andrew Luck to the Colts. And with, when you got a player like Deshaun Watson running the show, he can definitely get it done. But they did lose a huge player on the offensive side with Lamar Miller tearing his ACL during preseason. So their running game is going to be very, very interesting to watch. And with the, uh, with the trade of Jadavion Clowney to the Seahawks, their defense is just J.J. Watt. So 
And Bill O'Brien's looking to uh, get it, get the season started off with a big win on the road on Monday night. They're excited of the New Orleans Saints coming off their 13 and 3 season last year, winning the NFC South, but failing in the NFC Championship game against the Rams in a very, and I repeat, very controversial non. Uh, pass interference call, which nearly uh, nearly started a riot in New Orleans, and it even went into court with that old clown shoes, Roger Goodell. But I'll just say it right now: the Saints were screwed out of the NFC Championship game. I think they were screwed out of it. The Rams they won the game, but they won it thanks to the refs. And I'm really hoping the Saints get back to the NFC Championship because the city's been waiting for a title since 2009 and last year was maybe their best opportunity to get back to the Super Bowl. But I think they can get it done with Drew Brees and Sean Payton, the dynamic duo. But I don't know how many years Sean Payton has in New Orleans or Drew Brees. So coming from me in this first game, the first of the two Monday night games, who Deshaun Watson versus Drew Brees. This one's going to be a good one. But coming from me, I'm going to go with Drew Brees and New Orleans Saints to get it done at home and defeat the Houston Texans on Monday Night Football. And now the final Monday night game and the final game of week one. It is an AFC West rivalry showdown between the Denver Broncos heading to the black hole to face the Oakland Raiders. Now the Denver Broncos are coming off their 6-10 and 10 season last year and really the Broncos are nearly just done in the AFC West. They haven't really been as dominant as they used to be with Peyton Manning there and really they can't really win with what they got this season and I don't think they'll even be a threat in the AFC at all. There is idea of the Oakland Raiders coming out there 4-12 and season, and they're looking towards this year to be a redemption year. And with John Gruden there, old Chucky himself looking to play child's play 2 this season, did pick up a huge addition getting Antonio Brown for Derek Carr. But the question is, can Antonio Brown uh, leave the bag, leave the luggage that he has with him uh, in the past? Because he's been bringing that luggage in the offseason saying, I'm going to retire if I don't get this helmet. Um, you know, he's bringing his luggage with him, and that's what happens when you bring a player that's very well known in one city, in Pittsburgh, you bring him to Oakland, so you bring all of his stuff that he he had in Pittsburgh over to the, his new team. So hopefully they'll turn that around, and I'm really hoping that this year the Raiders can actually turn uh, have a great season. I think they can be a threat, especially in the AFC West with the Chargers and the, and the Chiefs, but hopefully they'll get it done here at home on Monday night. So coming from me in this final Monday night game, in the final game of week one, I'm going to take Derek Carr and the Oakland Raiders to get done at home and defeat the Denver Broncos on Monday night football. And those are my week one NFL predictions. Now I want to thank you guys so very much for watching this video today. Comment below. Who do you have winning in week one? Let me know who you got. Do you see any upsets happening? Do you see any stars uh, shining in their debut? Hopefully those, those new rookies will have a big showing in week one. And as always, represent your NFL teams in the comments section. Let's have a conversation about it. Of course, I'm always on to see your comment. Like it and of course, reply right back to me because comments are absolutely always welcome on this channel. I do want to thank you guys so very much for watching all my videos today. Again, I'm sorry for the, the three sneezes in in this video that was on me i didn't expect it but again thank you guys so very much for watching all the videos on the channel today now before you guys go as always you guys can never forget to do this that like button comment share with friends of course super kick that like button like only you guys can of course you guys can never forget to do this as well that subscribe button become part of this bigger and dangerous dangerous alliance and i will see you guys next week for four big videos later days guys and peace the nfl season begins now